It's about that time of day again, folks. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter, boys and girls. Joseph James here. Tuesday evening, June 9th, 2015, cruising our way through this second full week of the month of June. We got a Wednesday ahead of us here. We got a lot of news tomorrow. Big jolts report today. This is going to be a jam-packed newsletter in store for you guys and gals this evening. Before we get in tonight's newsletter, I do want to remind you I teach all of this material covered in tonight's newsletter to all of our students here at School of Trade. Check out schooloftrade.com. We get a great free trial on there and three levels of membership. Head over to schooloftrade.com for more information. Also, make sure you're watching this video on our trading blog here at sidewaysmarkets.com. There are three reasons why I would highly recommend you navigate over to Sideways Markets and watch this video. There's a link below the video in the description if you're watching in our YouTube page. First of all, you can download all the charts I'm going to use here this evening in the video. You can download those charts right below the video by following that link that conveniently says click here to download today's charts. Also, if you're not a member of School of Trade, I would love to offer a free pass. Come out and test drive our live trade room. Come out and join me in our trade room tomorrow as a member for a day here at School of Trade. If you're not a member of School of Trade, you'd like a free pass to attend our trade room, see what everyone's been talking about. I've got that free pass in the upper left-hand corner. And then, of course, lower left-hand corner, all I need is your name and your email address, and I'll add you to our nightly newsletter mailing list. And I'll shoot you an email every evening just before 8 p.m. Eastern time when this nightly newsletter is ready to be viewed. So make sure, guys, before we jump in, download today's charts, grab your free pass, register for the newsletter list. If you grab the free pass or if you register for the newsletter list, I'm going to send you a verification email, so make sure you check your inbox, check your spam, check your junk folder. Make sure you find that verification email to give me approval to keep emailing you in the future. What a crazy, crazy Tuesday we had today. Euro Futures starting off the newsletter here for the ninth day of the sixth month of the year 2015. Just as we expected, Euro pulls off the highs. Go back and watch last night's newsletter. Or at the end of this video, it'll run right into last night's newsletter. And you'll hear me say, looking for the correction off that high. We got the correction today on the euro. We're definitely bullish here still in the long term. Pulled back off those highs. Now we're gunning for, right? Jumped up, pulled back. Now we're gunning for that range high target. That range high target. And we got a pair of measured move targets for you. Up here at that 15.29, 15.13 area. That's a pretty tall order of, of bulls here for, the, for, a, for a liquid market such as the euro. So it's probably going to be a little bit difficult to get all the way to that 15.13 tomorrow. But look for that later on this week here. Got a pretty strong jolts report today. Record-breaking jolts report. Everything looking pretty rosy in the U.S. economy as far as the jobs market goes. We'll see if that impacts the dollar tomorrow. If we do get a bullish push on that dollar it will make it difficult for this euro to move higher if we get a strong bullish push to the dollar index tomorrow because of today's jolts report look for a failure and a return back to that 1100 so remember the euro is highly susceptible to dollar correlation because the dollar index 60 percent of the dollar index is made up of yeah you guessed it the euro so we're bullish after today's pullback we're trying to retest that high again the goal of the bulls right now is to get it up to that high 1381 buyers will be looking for pullback trades at support so as we're going here if we pull back that's where your best buying opportunity is going to be look for a measured move down to that low and look for a buying opportunity but again watch out for those buyers to fail here especially if we have a strong dollar syndrome tomorrow because that euro will have a fundamental negative correlation to it if we don't pull back and just keep going higher here buyers you guys have the green light here to be buying just make sure you don't buy right into any of these resistance areas and then definitely be looking for some profit taking up at these highs at 1381 i would definitely be expecting to see a little bit of a fake break of that high and then some profit taking here again we'll be watching the dollar pretty closely on this euro tomorrow specifically because of today's very strong record-breaking jolts report i'll bet janet yellen is uh, celebrating a little bit that's her favorite news report by the way so we know we got the euro bullish right now buyers you guys are in control but again i'll be watching that dollar tomorrow morning we'll have that up and running in our trade room tomorrow morning come out and see us i'll be looking for this area right here really to be tested uh again buyers fail buyers fail right best way to be a seller right now in a bullish trend like this is to wait for pullbacks to support 
find those buyers entering the market, right? They leave their tracks, big green candles, and then look for those buyers to fail so you sellers can sell right into those stopolas. Let's keep going. How about we move to the crude futures here? The CL, the 16 anchor chart here on crude. Woo! Boy, just like that, we go from being bearish to bullish, a just a, a launching type of day today. Little bit of it fueled, uh, yeah, okay, that was a pun intended. Little bit of the fuel was because of today's API number. I'm sure people are also looking forward to tomorrow's DOE report at 10.30 a.m. Just a heads up, though, we did get an API number here, negative 6.7 million. Now, last time I checked, this has been the routine for crude the past few months. 24 hours before the inventory report comes out, Bulls get all perky. We get a really low number from the API, and then it ends up coming all the way back down. So I hate to I, I hate to try to predict here, but if the future has anything to do with what we've seen in the recent past, this price will end up coming back down eventually here tomorrow. It may not be, though, until after we get that news report coming out. Go back and check it out. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we've seen this rally, this Tuesday rally into a Wednesday Department of Energy inventory report, which always seems to come out very similar to the API number, but price typically comes right off those highs. I feel like I'm a broken record right now. An overshoot on Tuesday night tells me to expect a larger overshoot into Wednesday. We get a big variable with the inventory report tomorrow, so it's going to be difficult to tell exactly when that bigger correction happens, but... Boy, I'll tell you, I tried to find a few more reasons to say this wasn't an overshoot. I said, it can't be doing it again, right? But the problem is this channel just lines up just, bam, perfectly. Again, as I always say, the midlines give it away. The midlines give it away. That channel really fits like a glove. So crude oil, definitely bullish here with an overshoot of the bull channel highs, which tells us to expect a large correction back towards the lows of the channel. Buyers definitely want to be patient right now. Whether you whether you agree with the overshoot or not, look at how far away from the BMT, the 200 moving average we are, all the way back at 59. And let's be honest, it's only a buck and a half, right? It's only 90 cent or whatever, 150 pennies up, depending on how you how you slice it. So not a big correction needed to get back down to that 200. So. When, I, when we see stuff like this in our trade room, the first thing we think of is, is look for buyers to try and fail. Buyers to try and fail on the way down right to those channel lows. Right, The uneducated trader says, ooh, bull channel, right? Let's keep buying it. Well, the problem is, is when I see an overshoot of this high, I think about that poker game where the buyers have all the chips in the middle, right? They're, they've anted all in, and the only way to get those chips back is to cash them in, right? Take their profit. You're also going to have some bears out there looking for bargains to sell at these highs, right? You know there's a ton of resistance here, channel resistance, uh, major trigger zone resistance, trigger zone number two resistance up here. I mean, there even might be a trend line. Yeah, heck, there's a trend line sitting right there too. You really don't need that many reasons to be very careful to be a bull right here. And, you know, in all reality, it may push up a little bit higher here, but this is where professional traders go. I don't want to go anywhere near that to the long side right now. If I'm going to be a buyer right now on crude, I really want to wait. Again, I'll wait through those that correction and then I'll look for the chance to get a much better value at it buying off that low. You buy right now, you're paying a premium price, right? You're paying it at 6054 right now. I'd rather buy it at 5904. And you're gonna miss some trades that way. You know, you will miss a few trades here and there by being conservative like that. But you know the, the name of the game for being a professional trader is just stay alive long enough to cash some big paychecks. That's that's one of the hardest lessons to learn here. I could buy this right now and maybe I stomach the right the, the correction and maybe it gets me eventually into the green, but you know, my broker is going to call me and ask me to wire me more money, my wire him more money on a margin call before that happens. So again, I'd be very suspicious uh, to the buy side right now. Sellers you guys are definitely going to have, in, in my opinion, the easiest money to make here. 
And what I'd be doing is wait for areas of support, such as 59.91, wait to see some buyers enter. You know where their stops are gonna be and just sell right into that stop loss. What's gonna happen is the bulls, when they get forced out of those long trades, they're gonna have to sell their way out of those long trades. It'll throw the price right at your first target. You can remove that risk really quickly and then hold on to it down to that area around 59 even. Again, we'll be definitely looking to be buyers here though down around these lows. Whether we get there tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, we'll have to see. Uh, but we'll definitely wanna be buyers at these, at these channel lows here. And of course, if you're waiting to be a buyer right now, stay patient. Be very careful tomorrow. And uh, sellers, be waiting for those areas of support to try to hold, right? I always like to wait for the buyers to take the bait and then, again, sell right into their stop losses. Again, tomorrow, inventory report on crude, 1030. That means between 1015 and 1045, you're gambling tomorrow. Careful, careful. Tomorrow is one of those days dramatically affected by one particular news event. If we do push higher, guys, you'll see we do have some great resistance areas overhead here, right? So if we do happen to just take off to the upside and you want to be a buyer, uh, even though I believe the easier money will be waiting for the buyers to fail and selling it off those highs. But if you are insisting on being a bull right now, you get some targets waiting for you overhead there on the black gold. Don't forget, you can download all those charts and you can trade these markets with me tomorrow in our live trade room here at School of Trade. Let's keep moving on and up to the gold here the gc 16 anchor here on the gold finally gold right we finally we found a pulse jeez louise this thing took a while to get off these lows here just kind of kept chugging its way down here well we're definitely off those lows now and just like we've been saying here for the past two days on the newsletter we really had to get up off these lows so we can start looking for another shot to the downside today's strong jolts report again i keep mentioning that jolts report because it was a record-breaking number and it's it's a it's, it's an up-and-coming news event that all the analysts seem to be watching here most traders know about it right now again like i said janet yellen loves it uh and it's a real accurate uh kind of uh image of the jobs market right now much better than jobless claims every thursday morning so gold is bearish and approaching the highs of that bear channel sellers you guys are staying patient right now waiting for a test of those channel highs right we get a lot of great resistance areas overhead here that we're going to be using as selling opportunities either with a reversal pattern a failed buying pattern or wait for it to make the move and then sell those rips right on the way back down so sellers good job staying patient your patience is about to pay off here as we get up towards those highs and then buyers you guys have some short-term opportunities to get up to those resistance areas overhead. So in the big picture right now, again, sellers, you guys are looking to sell at these resistance areas overhead. You got some targets waiting for you down bottom here at the lows. Okay, so definitely long-term bearish right now. But how about you bulls? I feel like I've been neglecting you bulls on the gold here this these last few days for obvious reasons obviously but let's zoom in on this goal on this channel here as you can see there is a bull channel here coming up on that on that gold here let's check it out now we'll zoom in on that chart a little bit faster and this really in my opinion really underscores where you should be looking if you're a bull and where you should really be looking for proof if you're a bear right now first of all gold bullish in the short term right i mean obviously it's bullish in the short term we've been coming off those lows the past 36 hours almost 40 hours now and of course so we're bullish in the short term we see an undershoot of that high right undershoot of that high if you're a member of mine remember what i always say when you see an undershoot of that chart double check to make sure that channel's correct you can see midline lines up nicely support trend line lines up nicely if this isn't correct, I'll be very surprised. So we definitely have an undershoot of that high. An undershoot tells me that we have a little bit of underwhelming environment here from the bulls. Almost as if the bulls kind of gave up on it, right? They need to find lower prices to get more buyers involved. Undershoots act very similarly in reaction as overshoots. They definitely mean something different, but they react very similarly in the, in the sense that we expect to get because of the weakness at these highs we expect to get 
usually an equal and opposite overshoot in the opposite direction. Now, again, going back to my members here at SchoolTrade.com, you guys know it all depends on where we break that channel low. That will determine where that overshoot support level is. If I have to guess right now, though, I'd say it's going to be right around 72.4, 72.5. Again, where we hit these lows, that will determine now where that overshoot support is going to be drawn in. So pay close attention to that. And, and again, don't forget, you're not alone out there. Uh, we'll help you guys out through this in real time. Just come out and join us in the trade room tomorrow, and we'll walk you right through it. Again here, again here, undershoot of the highs. That suggests there'll be a deeper pullback before the buyers try again, right? Think about it. The undershoot of the high tells me buyers need more enticement, right? They need they need us to up the ante a little bit. Give us a lower price to get the buyers involved. That's, what's, that's what it's telling you. So buyers will look for opportunities around the overshoot support area, but sellers, remember the long-term trend is still down. This area right here. Now again, I can't be precise with this because we don't know where it's going to break that low, but where we break that overshoot support level, if we just collapse right through it, that's your green light. Well, maybe call it a red light, right? But it's a green light saying go for the sell side now. So depending on, let's say tomorrow morning, we test the overshoot level and we hold, right? Well, that's your clue now, get to being a buyer. But again, knowing that long-term trend is down right now, if you're a smart seller, if you're a bear right now, you're waiting for that support level to hold, You, I'm sorry, to fail, you know where those stops are going to be, right? Think about if you would have bought that support. Where would your stop loss be? Sell right into that stop loss area, and that's how you're going to grab the easy money off of this reversal of this short-term bullish trend, and then, of course, continuation with that long-term bearish trend. And then, of course, you got targets waiting for you down bottom here for all you sellers out there. So keep an eye, if you're a seller, keep an eye on support levels to fail, specifically that overshoot support, which I've got kind of estimated at that 72.4 area right now. I'll have it for you in real time tomorrow morning if you need it in our trade room. And again, if you're a bull right now, be suspicious of this area until we get that deeper pullback here. If we happen to run higher here, okay, if we happen to run higher, it's not likely because of that strong dollar we're most likely going to see tomorrow because of the job support. But if we do get it going higher here, you've got targets waiting for you overhead, measured move, extension. And again, don't forget the high of that channel will also be a nice, easy target for you. We do expect deeper pullback, though, on the gold, so be on your best behaviors here for you buyers. And then how about that S&P? Boy, the S&P is a stingy one here. It's been stingy here all week. I thought, well, we did end up getting it. Sometimes I forget about the S&P as the S&P. Let's be honest, right? It's a, it's a battleship. It's not a, it's not a speedboat, right? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Hummer. It's not a little Ferrari. So this market takes a little bit longer to kind of make the turn, right? So S&P, we talked about this last night. All the way down, overshoot of those bear channel lows. We're definitely bearish. But again, what does an overshoot now tell me? This one's a, an opposite overshoot we saw on gold, which should make perfect sense for all of us here, right? Negative correlations there. So we know the S&P is bearish. Overshoot says, go back to that poker table. Sellers have all their chips. They're fully committed. How do they get their chips out of the middle? They're going to take their profit out of the middle before they can go back and put it back in the market. So Unless the sellers are really aggressive here right now, we are likely going to see that overshoot continue to result in that overcorrection. Now, I really had a difficult time finding just the most important resistance area. I mean, look at this chart. Right? That's the S&P for you right there. Really very, very unique for the S&P 500, right? It's that, again, it's that, it's that kind of battle tank that just kind of keeps on chugging on the way down. And to get it to turn around, it really needs to get everybody out of those shorts and now start going higher here. So it's definitely taking its time right now. If you're a, if you're a bull right now in the S&P, you're going to use all of these areas of resistance the exact same way that I told you guys on gold. In this case, though, as the price goes higher, 
again, I'd be very suspicious of this area for sellers right now just because you got the overshoot at that low. So again, bulls, look for those sellers to fail here, going up, look for them to fail, going up, look for them to fail. And again, as we go higher towards the high of that bear channel, we're likely going to find our way back up to the highs of that bear channel. If you're a bull right now, the best ways to do it, find areas of support, look for sellers to try, right? Take the bait and then buy it right into their stop losses. If you're a seller right now, you want to be patient here. I, I really have a hard time telling you to be selling here at this area, 88 to 84 and a quarter. I, I'd, be, I'd be expecting that area to, to fail on you. Maybe I'm wrong, right? But it's when you see an overshoot like that, you really want to stay patient for those opportunities, right, as you go higher to the high of that channel right now. So overshoot tells us we'll likely see a larger correction. Sellers should use caution. Sellers want to wait for opportunities after the right after the correction, and buyers will be looking for sellers to try and fail at all those resistance levels overhead as we make our way back up to the channel highs. All right. Last but not least here, let's wrap it up here with the fastest time frame on the S&P. We go all the way down to a four, and this is for all you bulls out there right now on the ES. Again, very strong news day today. We get a little bit more tomorrow, but really tomorrow is for crude oil, Wednesday's inventories. Not a lot more news here until Treasury budget tomorrow afternoon for anything that would really have an impact on the S&P. I think you're going to see a lot of trickle down, though, for that jolts report today as the analysts start to put that back in the desk of the traders tomorrow. So bottom line, though, is we can see we're definitely bullish. Little bit of a pathetic channel here. It kind of reminds me of that gold channel. But again, you can see though, we're definitely bullish. We're rotating off the low, up to the high, back down to that low, back up to that high. And of course, we'll be looking for the best buying opportunities back off of that low right now. So, SPers, right? The ES traders out there, the bulls, you guys have control in the short term. Buyers, you'll be looking for trades at support levels with the goal to buy near those channel lows for the best risk reward. Sellers, you can look for those levels of support to fail so they can so you can sell into those stop losses. All right. Really not a lot of major clues on this except for the fact that we've got a lot of great support levels here waiting to be tested. I'm looking at U72 and a quarter down to the lows of that channel. Measured move has already been achieved. In the long term, in the short term, though, you'll notice we have potential for a measured move target up there around the, we'll call that 290 even. So bulls, take your pick as far as resistance areas overhead. Remember, you know the best trades are going to come at support and at the lows of that bull channel. Sellers, be looking for those bulls to try and fail at these support levels if you're a bear right now. Guys and gals, that'll wrap it up here for me tonight. You guys and gals have a great evening. Enjoy your day tomorrow. I'll be opening up my live trade room tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Like I said last night, though, I have a, I hate this, I, I have a scheduled power outage in my office tomorrow. Uh, shortly after the U.S. opening bell, I'm going to be scrambling to find my spot for a laptop tomorrow in the trade room. And, of course, no newsletter tomorrow night. I, I got no power. I can't do the newsletter by candlelight, unfortunately. <laughs> no Morse code newsletters for you guys tomorrow. So next newsletter will be on Thursday evening. I know I'm going to miss you guys tomorrow, but call California Edison and put a complaint in. Don't tell him I sent you. Please do. <laughs> don't tell him I sent you. Guys, no newsletter tomorrow night. I'd be here if I could, believe you me. I'll be, I'll be dining by candlelight tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll see how that goes. I'm camping. Hopefully power comes on when they say it will. So scheduled power outage. I'll see you guys early tomorrow morning in the trade room here as a student at School of Trade, 8 a.m. We open things up. But tomorrow afternoon, though, no, no newsletter for you guys tomorrow afternoon. My name is Joseph. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning as students. And then bittersweet, I'll see you guys in uh, 48 hours, Thursday evening for our next newsletter. And again, that was California Edison. Do not tell them JJ sent you. Guys, be well out there. Be nice to each other. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.